Our next speaker um, is a longtime member of the R community. And I will say that his stand workshop was actually played a large role in how I met my wife. So I want to thank you very much for that, for uh, doing this. And actually, he has been very helpful with my wife's research ever since then. But uh, my wife actually emailed me one day asking to attend the workshop. And that's one of the first part of the story of how we met. So thank you for the stand workshops on multiple levels. Welcome, Jonah Gabry. Hi, everyone. I am Jonah. Uh, I one of the stand developers, like Jared mentioned, I work at Columbia University. Uh, I work closely with Andrew Gelman, who you heard from yesterday. Um, he's probably my closest collaborator. And uh, I'm gonna talk today about a new way of interfacing with Stan from R. All right, just a, a little bit of background first for anybody who isn't super familiar with Stan. Stan is a probabilistic programming language that allows you to fit rich, complicated Bayesian models. We have interfaces for R, Python, Julia, pretty much anywhere people are computing things. Used throughout academia, I think at this point I've seen at least one Stan model in like every, every academic field where statistical modeling is used. That's probably a slight exaggeration, but uh, but it's, it's all over the place, government agencies. I've done trainings in the US and other countries around the world for different government agencies. Most companies, a lot of, not maybe not most, a lot of companies that you've heard of are using STAN, but they don't really like to talk about it for some reason. Uh, probably maybe because they want to keep their secrets or something, but it means we can't advertise that a lot of, like, of these big companies are using STAN. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but I'm very glad that they're that they're using it. Um, and so we have a bunch of functionality in R. So here's a little map of the STAN ecosystem in R. In the top right, you kind of have the STAN C++ code where I put the STAN logo. And to get into R, we have this package called STAN headers, which brings all the header files in, and then the R STAN interface. Branching off of R STAN, we have some packages that fit STAN models for you without you having to write your own STAN code, R STAN ARM, BRMS. Um, and then we have some downstream modules for visualizing results, doing leave one out cross validation for in the Bayesian context, doing some variable selection in the Bayesian context. And we provide this package R STAN tools, which helps other people develop R packages for fitting uh, STAN models. So there's about, I don't know, somewhere between 50 and 100 packages on CRAN now that have their own STAN programs in them, you know, for different applications, um, which is really cool. Some of you probably heard of the rethinking package, but there's a whole lot of other ones out there. And then there are some projects like TidyBase, which uh, from Matthew K, which isn't really part of the STAN development team, but integrates really well with all of our tools and R. Um, and so this is all great. Our STAN has been around for a long time now. So what's the problem? Well, unfortunately, for one, this is what our forum often looks like. We have long posts trying to help people avoid problems that they get when installing Stan. So for example, you can see all of this horrible looking, all of these horrible looking error messages that Windows users have been dealing with recently. Um, previously, we had issues on Mac, now it's Windows. Um, the way that RSTAN works is it interfaces uh, with the STAN C++ code through RCPP, and I love RCPP, it's great, but it does, uh, it is a challenging way, especially with how complicated the STAN C++ libraries are, to interface. Um, and so often what happens is something that looks like this. <laughs> Uh, now, it doesn't have the STAN logo on there when you see this message in our studio, but it might as well. Um, because very often people are running like a huge stand model and then something happens and after hours or something they get this message and that's a real real bummer. So, uh, well, let me reset my, uh, my timer here. Um, and uh, so we're looking for ways to, uh, to avoid these problems. Here's another problem that we have. This is the CRAN page for our STAN. It says the version is 2.21.2. .2. If you look at the STAN user's guide, it says the version is 2.24. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of cool features that have come out in between version 2.21 and 2.24, but it takes a long time for our STAN to make it onto CRAN. 
uh, in, for each release. There's often new stuff that's added in the stand C++ code that presents certain challenges for interfacing with it or Cran gets upset about something. And so the R stand package really lags behind and you can't take advantage of some new features like enhanced functionality for parallelization of big matrix computations, all sorts of other cool stuff that's come out in newer releases of STAN that uh, is inaccessible in our STAN for months at a time. So we wanted to come up with a way to solve all of these problems, this problem, this problem, <laughs> this problem. And our solution is a package that we call command stan r. Um, I put a little note down here on the bottom for Python users who happen to be at the wrong conference. We also have command stan pi, so you can go look that up. Um, and what command stan r is, is instead of interfacing with the stan C++ libraries through RCPP, we decided to instead, well, not instead, we still have r stan. Uh, but to also offer a version where we provide an R package that actually calls the STAN command line interface. Right? And, and we'll see what some of the advantages of that are, of that is in a second. Uh, before I show you that, let's just see what some people are saying since we released this. So uh, Stuart Russell on Twitter says, with exactly the same two hour model switching from R STAN to command STAN R with no changes in compile flags or anything, runs 23% faster. He doesn't have any idea why. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why either, because I don't know exactly what his model is. But my hunch is, is that he's using some of the stand functionality that's improved between these two releases. And the fact that we can get uh, the latest stand features with command stand R, but not an R stand, lets him run a much faster model. Um, there's also, command stand R is probably also just faster than R stand in general. Uh, does I.O. a little bit better, uh, handles memory better. Um, uh, we have a lot of Japanese users, so I really enjoy reading R stand, R stand tweets in Japanese, but I provi uh, provide the translation for you here. So he had an error with R stand after upgrading to R uh, 4.0. I can't tell you how many people had this problem on our forums and how much time we've spent trying to help everybody out <laughs> in this regard. Um, and so uh, he switched to command stand R and it works fine. Um, Liu Zhang on Twitter said, I tried the toy example, so I guess it's just a toy example, but it works so well on his laptop and also on the computing cluster that he's considering rewriting all of his stuff in command stand R, I assume uh, compared to R stand before. So why is it, why are people enjoying it so much? Why are we excited about this? Um, oops, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna actually jump over and show you a little bit about what, what this actually looks like. So the package is not on CRAN yet, but you can install it from GitHub using DevTools or from our repository on the STAN website using install packages. And so why is this so nice? Well. First of all, you can install the command stand R package and we provide a function to install command stand for you. Um, and what that does is it allows us to provide a function that does the installation in a way that we think will work most consistently. Whereas often what happens when people install R stand is they have all sorts of weird, I don't know, make flags on different files on their computer and those causes problems. But through this install function here, we're able to, um, kind of help the installation work better. Um, it also allows you to install any version of STAN you want, basically. So there's an argument here to provide the URL to whatever release you want to install. So it could install an old release, the newest release, a release candidate. Um, and the way that, that it works, for anybody used to our STAN, this will seem a little bit different because uh, we're actually using R6 classes here. And what that lets us do is uh, have the R, command stand R and command stand pi actually provide an almost identical user experience, right? Be, the only difference here will be like swapping the dollar sign for the, the dot in Python, right? And so what happens is it takes the path to your stand program. So you write some complicated model in stand, um, pass it to this function, command stand model, which will compile it for you in this case, 
uh, on my system, the executable is already up to date, so it'll just tell you. And it creates this R6 object, which just has this compiled executable. And, uh, and so you can print the stand program, but then even though you're calling the command line interface, it doesn't mean you have to use, know how to use the command line interface to stand. You just put your data in a list like an R and then call our sample method, right? And you can tell it how many chains you wanna run, how many chains you wanna run in parallel. And then what we do is we use the process X package to send off uh, different processes, right? And run command stand on each of those processes, bring the results back together, and then read the results back into R. And then we provide some nice, tidy summaries of the output with the summary function. You can use uh, some of this like Lambda functionality stuff to compute functions of your parameters. Like here, I estimated a model with the parameter theta. I could use this syntax to ask what's the probability it's less than a half. These are just nice little ways that we integrate with like some of the tidyverse stuff. Um, but the real benefit of this is that you're not going to get the types of crashes you get running our stand in our studio. Um, it's going to handle the memory a lot better. It integrates with all of our other packages. So for example, it integrates nicely with the base plot package, which makes ggplot objects uh, for showing your MCMC output. Um, and we've got a lot of uh, tutorials. Here's another one here about how it works a little bit internally and how we try to handle reading the results back into R in a more memory efficient way. We use um, Vroom, the Vroom package, so which has been really great. Um, checking my time here. Uh, but in general, uh, people have been really enjoying this new interface. We will hopefully get it onto CRAN at, at some point. So, uh, let me show you one other cool thing that we're starting to get nice contributors uh, or nice contributions, probably also from nice contributors, although I don't know them personally. Uh, so we just had a contributor, Mikhail Popov, who contributed a new R Markdown command stand engine, or I guess it's a Knitter command stand engine. So we've had the stand engine in there for a while, which uses R stand, but that would cause a problem if you wanted to instead use command stand R in your Knitter document or your vignette or something, but we put a fun, we have a new function in command stand R called register knitter engine. And what that does is if you have a stand chunk in your knitter document or your R markdown document, it tells, tells it to evaluate it using command stand R instead of R stand. Um, this is really cool. The only problem that we've had, and maybe somebody, maybe there's an expert here at this conference who could uh, give me a hint here, is that in interactive mode, so this is a rendered like our markdown document, but if I was running this in interactive mode and just evaluating chunks, it doesn't seem to respect overriding the R stand engine. So that's something we need to figure out. But if you're knitting a document, it does a great job and you can now substitute this in for your R stand document. Um, and so we're pretty excited about this interface. It's not going to replace R stand because R stand is really needed for all of the R packages on CRAN that have pre-compiled STAN programs in them. So here's the R stand CRAN page, and there's a whole lot of packages down here depending on R stand. And most of them, because they depend on R stand, are able to offer STAN code that just runs out of the box. It doesn't, you don't need to wait for it to compile. So this is like the R stand ARM package. Um, and unfortunately, in order to offer that same functionality with command stand R, we basically need to get CRAN to have an installed command stand, the command line interface to stand and pre-compile everything. And I don't know if we'll be able to get them to do that. So R stand isn't going anywhere. We're gonna need it as the back end for all these packages that wanna just offer pre-compiled stand programs. But if you're not offering pre-compiled programs, like for example, the BRMS package, you can, it already offers now command stand R as the back end. So the BRMS package, which is one of the more popular R packages for fitting stand models, you can now just tell it to run your model in command stand R instead of R stand. And the advantages to that will be that you could get some of the additional speed, or if you have a lot of data or parameters, the command stand R package will handle memory uh, better than R stand will. 
And so I'm not trying to hate on our stand. I'm one of the authors of our stand, but I can't tell you how frustrating an experience it is when we release a new version and then everybody has installation troubles and we feel terrible about it. And it's, uh, it's really unpleasant. So we're pretty excited about this uh, command stand R package. And I just want to show you, um, but I wasn't kidding. There's a Python version called command stand pi. Uh, and what's great about this is that the interfaces are basically identical with the exception of like the dot symbol and the dollar sign symbol. So if you're working with a colleague and one of you wants R and one of you wants Python, there's my timer with a few minute notice. Uh, and one of you wants Python, you can basically read each other's code, no problem. The stand programs are always the same. They don't care what language you're using to interface, but now even the code that you're using in the interface, uh, so your R script will look a lot like their Python script. Also helps the development. So like I work on command stand R with my colleague uh, who has an amazing name. Rock Cheshnovar from Slovenia. But Mitzi and uh, Ari, who are working on Command Stand Pi, we can make a lot of the design decisions together because the interfaces are really designed very similarly and have the same basically user facing experience. And I think I have two minutes left, so I'm going to basically wrap it up here and say that you can get in touch. I don't have a personal Twitter account. Um, I'm trying to resist for as long as possible. But I do tweet from the MCMC Stan account, so do some of my collaborators. Uh, so you can definitely get in touch with us from the Stan account. You can check out uh, projects that I work on, which is basically all of the R packages related to the Stan ecosystem. Um, reach out by email and on the Stan forums. I am at Jonah. And uh, yeah, again, hopefully uh, I'll do another Stan class with Jared next year uh, or even later this year. I don't know. Now that we're all online, I guess that we can just kind of do it whenever we want. Um, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Jonah. It's always great when we could have a Stan talk at the conference. We always try to at least get one of them going. going. And if anyone is interested in a workshop uh, about Stan or otherwise, send us a message, send a message to myself, to Amada, to Joe or Lauren on my team, anyone on my team, let us know what workshops you wanna see. 